The Terran vs Zerg matchup has been very well figured out over the last couple of years. It feels that pretty much all of the early game build orders and strategies are almost set in stone, and they pretty much all lead to watch either that Marine Siege Tank or that Marine Widow Mine based army. I couldn't help but notice though, that our blue Terran player here, he was playing some fun and interesting strategies at IEM Katowice, involving a lot of battle cruisers. Now, I haven't seen these particular games yet, but I heard they are a lot of fun, so what I've got for you today is a best of three series, where in game number one we find ourselves an ancient cistern, spotting right here in the bottom left hand corner, we have none other than special. We'll see if he decides to go for some special strategies, like, look at this! These two structures special are supposed to go over here, mate. All right. His opponent in the opposite corner, playing here with the red Zerg drones. He's from Poland, a very strong Zerg. And we're looking at Elazer's main hatchery. Uh, looks like there was a little bit of a pause in the game. Pause, please. Ready, go, go. Do we have ref or do I just go? I don't know. Just go, I guess. Haha, <laughs> I think so. Go. All right, fair enough. This particular series was played during one of the earlier stages of the tournament. I believe it was casted on the B stream at the time as well. I heard the games were fun but uh, I haven't seen them myself just yet. I remember though, uh, when Special was playing against Serral, if you guys are interested, I may very well cast those games in the near future as well, so make sure you subscribe if you haven't already. Oh, that's what we're doing. Okay, okay, we're doing that Bion-esque build, right? Special, plant, uh, Special spends a lot of time over in Korea these days. I actually think he spends more time in Korea, it seems, than he does in his home country of Mexico. But anyways, um, he played a series against Serral, and I looked at the screen, I was like, okay, the build order seemed pretty normal, and then I looked away for a couple minutes, and then suddenly, there were like six battle cruisers. I was like, oh, that's that's what we're doing now today, apparently. That is what we're doing against several of all people as well. So I'm secretly hoping that Special is going to pull off something along those lines in this particular series as well. This has become a, uh, a very popular build, actually, from especially the Korean Terrans. They have been planting their barracks right over here at the front. And what's interesting about this is that, well, the Zerg needs to figure out if this is a triple Rex opener or a double Rex. And it's really quite difficult to know if that's the case, because you could be hiding that third barracks right over here to the side. Zerg players need to decide how many units they actually produce and whether or not they want to go for a third hatchery. Uh, depending on whether or not there's actually, well, a third uh, barracks with this as well. So, at this point, special, yeah, he's not showing anything else. But that doesn't mean that Elazer isn't playing against a style like that. Obviously, we have perfect vision, but at this point in the game, Elazer is just guessing. Anyways, question is, how many, um, how many Reapers ooh, is it going to be? He gets a one drone over there. Not bad. A lot of the Terrans seem to be opting to go for only three Reapers. Yeah, ooh, free tumor. Not bad. A lot of the um, Terran players in uh, the Korean server, at least, or on the Korean server, they are opting to go only for three Reapers, which I find kind of surprising. So you go for a double Rex opener in your own natural to rush out a couple of Reapers, and then you only make three of them? I feel like I've, if I was playing, I would go for at least like five, okay? Just because it feels like a good option. Then again, as soon as metabolic boost, as soon as Zerkling speed is done, these sort of units do tend to fall off pretty rapidly, so Special definitely knows the timing at which that upgrade is going to finish up. We're only a little bit away right now as well, the spawning pool is closing in on that upgrade that will give those Zerklings a couple of wings. Okay, well getting any drone kill is fantastic, honestly. It's not a very large commitment, right? But with an opener like this... Okay, he's just gonna sec them, yeah. Ooh, getting five drones? Six drones here in total, that's not bad at all. That's a fantastic start, actually, for only three of those Reapers. Anyways, uh, a build order like this, it pretty much always leads towards that bio mid-game, right? Since if you open up with two barracks, you may as well use them. Usually one of those barracks, it's going to have a tech lap on it right over there, and then you go for stim pack. Eventually you go for combat shields, and then, well, if you're going for both of those upgrades, you're probably not going to be playing that Terran mech army here instead. Maybe later on in this series, we'll uh, see a little bit of spiciness coming out of special. Either way, third command center right now, already building, and this start is obviously fantastic, right? That's exactly what you want to have. Um, losing only three Reapers right there and killing that much. On top of that, the Creep Tumor too. I feel like a lot of Terrans would be quite happy just getting the Creep Tumor, but getting quite a few of the drones right there on the back of it as well. Elazer is going to have to cut some corners. Oh, would you look at that, actually? Really? So we're gonna go for a tech lab right here very shortly then. Because I doubt this is gonna be for Liberator range. Especially since Special has been going for a lot of Battlecruiser play. That is a funny start. 
So wait, it's a double barracks opener into a factory with a reactor, then a single medevac, and then into battle cruisers. So to put this in perspective, if you go for like a, a battle cruiser rush, you can have two out in like you know 10, 15 seconds from this game's timer. So this is a very late battle cruiser opener. It's like a, a macro battle cruiser, which is not something we've historically seen all too often in StarCraft 2 because, well. <laughs> Zerg players have quite a few good units that can counter those battle cruisers quite well. Usually the main concern you have as a Terran player is that Spire play. The Queen's obviously also a very dangerous unit, but this is a, uh, yeah, a macro battle cruiser with three command centers and then eventually one of the big boys. Now, of course, Zerg players do play against battle cruisers, but they're pretty much always early game battle cruisers, so they're always going to be rushed out battle cruisers. In this particular game, I wonder... Yeah, if there's even going to be a single Spore Crawler now that he sees the Medivac. So in a way, this is actually a very clever start right here from Special. He's not really looking to deal damage right over here with those Marines. I mean, it would be nice. He's not really looking to deal damage with these Hellions either. He's just trying to sell the story that everything is normal and that you most definitely don't need to go for a Spire or a couple of Spore Crawlers. Uncontested, a Battle Cruiser can deal a stupid amount of damage. I mean, they take a long time to produce. Again, they're 400 minerals, 300 gas. I feel like I say that every single game that there's a battle cruiser available. But these units are incredibly expensive. So now we are going into Terran Mech. Really? Okay, I've never seen this before. I'm actually glad I'm classing this series now. Okay, so I wasn't entirely sure when I first saw the two barracks going up. I thought this was going to be a conventional game, but... There we go. Zerklings do spot it eventually, but what in the world are you going to do? A spore crawler starts up right now. I think you go after the drones. No, 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 go after the drones, no? Really? Oh, no, I think he's actually assuming that the opponent already has some defense available. What? I'm surprised with the passivity right here on that one battle cruiser. I feel like we could get so much damage done. Is he really gonna try and kill the lair? Okay, Spire is started up right away. A couple of drones do pop out of the cocoon, so at least they get sacrificed for the swarm. But there's a lot of energy available on these queens. Did the Hellions get cleaned up? Oh my god, hold up right now. When did the Hellions die? So I backed off into the replay for like 10 seconds. Ah, I think that's why the Queen's got a little bit more ambitious. Yeah, yeah, so he's trying to go for the one-two punch right over here with the Hellions. And then he gets them all surrounded. Well then. I'm back to observing my own games, okay? For about a week at IEM Katowice, the, uh, the games were observed by a dedicated observer, and apparently now I have to go back to using my own camera? Ugh. I'm just kidding. Sometimes, though, I do miss some of the actions. Transfuse, hello. There you go. Um, okay, so this opener actually is... not as effective as I thought it was going to be. I think it could have dealt a lot more damage. Especially if the battle cruiser was sent towards the natural expansion and if the Hellions were not getting surrounded there for what was essentially free. But we do have more battle cruisers on the back of this, as well as a bunch of cyclones. So this is kind of fun. Because what's the counter usually to battle cruisers? Well, nine times out of ten, and there was a Zerkling over here inside of the main base. So Elazer knows what he's playing against, at least roughly. But nine times out of ten, Zerk players will go for Roaches together with Corruptor. Roach Ravager Corruptor is really good against this mech-ish, battlecruiser-ish type of style. What's funny though is that this is going to be Cyclone play. So this is not your conventional vanilla mech that we see most of the time. Instead we have Hellions and Cyclones as well as battlecruisers in the mix. Look at the production temp. This is after a double barracks opener. I guess the barracks really aren't that important. Like, it's 150 minerals to produce these early on. So I guess for a lot of Terran players, actually hold that thought, because there are once again Hellions in the mineral line. How much damage will these be able to do? Well, five drones so far, nothing all too crazy, but once again, a lot of Zorklings ready for the wraparound. Man, if Special uh, didn't lose any of those units, I would have liked this a whole lot better. Well, actually, you know what? This trade is working out decently well. <laughs> Don't think it was supposed to work out very well, but he got a little lucky right there. Slittering his way out of that Zerg surround. There's already three battle cruisers out though. There they are. The big guns. So what do you do right now as Zerg? Right? 
What do you do right now, Zerk? Oh, yeah, I was talking, by the way, about the barracks. I feel like the, the barracks opener, when you go for two barracks, most Terran players almost feel obligated that they have to go into bio play from there. But this was three Reapers into, like, eight Marines with a single Medivac, and then into Battlecruiser Cyclone Mech. That is... That is not something I've seen before. I've watched a lot of games of StarCraft II over the years. Yeah, a couple thousand. Uh, maybe tens of thousands. I don't know. I've, I've watched and played a lot of games of StarCraft II, okay? Well, I've, I've played at least 10,000 games, so... Don't know exactly how many games I've watched as well in total, but it's, it's been a fair amount. This is a build order that I have not seen before. Very cool. Okay, a couple more. Flames over here inside of the mineral line. The blue flame upgrade, always scary. Now you gotta guess though, as the Zerg, how many Corruptors do you produce? How many battle cruisers do you expect there to be? There's gonna be a amount of guns available, that is three of these guys going down right away. And they teleport away. The problem is, if you only have this amount of Corruptors against like six battle cruisers, you're not gonna be able to win that fight. And then suddenly your Roach Ravager army, your Roach Ravager Ling army gets absolutely destroyed. If you overcommit, however, to Corruptors, well, then you have a bunch of Corruptors up in the air that don't really deal a whole lot of damage. So if I were to make a guess, this Infestation Pit is probably to go up towards the Hive, and then eventually to go into the Greater Spire and Brute Lord potential, because that's going to be very helpful. Once again, though, there's an adventurous group of Terran units here in the middle of the map. Battlecruisers are coming in for the rescue. Now suddenly there's another one joining the fray as well. I would start getting concerned right now, because... Elazer is nearly maxed out. I mean, he's losing a lot of units right now, so I guess he's getting some supply back again as well. Here, here comes with a battlecruiser, or a battlecruiser, a battlecruiser rollby, a baneling rollby. At least he attempted one, but siege tanks there in the back, very nice already. Yeah, you need to make sure you have enough corruptors to deal with the BCs, but not so many corruptors that you don't have anything else up. Anyways, three additional factories here. Second armory as well. I would love to see continuous upgrades. Since the Cyclones mostly deal their damage from that lock-on ability, you don't actually need to upgrade their attacks all too often. You could actually theoretically here go for, I guess, air weapons and then mech armor. That would be a fun set of upgrades to go for and kind of a, an, an interesting combination. Not the case, however. We're going for the mechanical upgrades right here for the ground units. Not bad at all. That means that these siege tanks are gonna, yeah, they're gonna back a punch. It does mean, though, that Special is only really using these battle cruisers for now, right? I don't think he's really going to stick around on these units for all too long. Once again, a bunch of Yamato cannons and teleportations. He's going to lose one of them, okay? Still, though, one battle cruiser for four corruptors or so. Not necessarily the worst trait, especially if more and more corruptors are going to be part of this Zerg army. Okay, so. Pathogen glance. Coming up right here in the Infestation Pit, that is the Infestor Energy Upgrade. Fungal Growth is really good against, well, at least this part of the army, but we already have a pretty heavy focus right here on Cyclones. Well, okay. Good amount of damage being done right here, but it's... Oh, actually, Cyclones. Siege Tanks. Good amount of damage right there being done, I guess, by those units already. Uh, he's thinking about morphing in more Ravagers, but you can really see Laser's... Uh, thought process in this game, right? He's trying his best to counter a unit composition that was previously available for the Terran, but Special has already transitioned to watch the next force. And now we're going into the mass command centers. Okay, good corrosive balls right there, though, from Elazer. Elazer's economy is looking pretty good, but he doesn't have as many workers right now as Terran. Battlecruiser's here on the right side of the map as well. A couple of blue flame hell bets. Ready to roast a couple of those Zerklings. Drones are going to go down once more. Corrosive Balls over here are desperately trying to keep this Terran army on the left side at bay. One thing, though, you have to worry about here as the Terran player is that there's going to be a huge influx of reinforcing units for the Zerk. So 66 Lings right now on the production tab. This Terran army, I think, is going to get surrounded really badly. I mean, you could technically kill this with, like, three Corrosive Balls here. Anyways, the Balls are going to be used left, right, and center. And pretty much everything here will indeed get destroyed. Certainly an overextension right there from our Terran player, and that is definitely going to hurt. Corruptors right now in the main base. Maybe not as many BCs to deal with right now, but they can still use that caustic spray to be as obnoxious as possible. Some of the production structures here of the Terran are gonna go down, and, well, they're being used continuously here because of the amount of economy that Special has. He's constantly trading out army as well. Really? Oh, you gotta save this one too. One SCV, go. Okay, it's gonna burn down. 
Anyhow, huge bailing morph in right now for Elazer as he's ready to continuously deal damage here. Nicely done, actually. Yeah, very nicely done right here by Elazer. I don't really like his drone count. I mean, it's nice. But 69 is not as much as I was hoping for here. I think you probably want to have closer to like 90 with a unit composition like this. He's not a very wealthy man at this point in the game. He does not have that much money. So rolling Banelings into the planetary is nice. It's going to hurt the Terran's economy. But there are so many command centers ready to replace this one. This is an expensive set of units to lose. Yeah. Corrosive Biles are connecting with battle cruisers, which is nice, I guess. Um, the command center explosion, though, has already... Eh, it's started, right? We're at the beginning of the command center explosion, at least. Three orbitals at this point. Two command centers. I would imagine that both of those command centers are gonna grow little planetary fortress hats. They're gonna be a little bit more difficult to break. Elaser now mixing in some drones again. I think that is the right move, yeah. So Greater Spire, by the way, is finished. He does also have Infestors available, so Broodlord Infestor is a very scary unit comp and one that I would not be all too surprised seeing here. Those battle cruisers, though, still roaming the map. I love the Macro Battle Cruiser Opener. I, I don't have a better name for it right now, but I think Macro Battle Cruiser Opener with triple CC and a couple Reapers and a Marine drop and all that into Mac. I mean, it's pretty sick. They're gonna continuously deal damage right here at the 12 o'clock position. In the meantime, in the middle of the map, we have a small hit squad now mixed in with freaking Ravens. Let's go. Uh, they're gonna start clearing out some of that creep as well. The Corruptor count has grown. They're gonna... Ooh, Yamato down the hatchery and then get on out of there. You love to see it. These guys have been dealing a lot of damage. 29 kills, 16 kills, 17 kills. We also had a couple of dead battle cruisers, right? Or actually, only a single one. Anyways. Not bad at all. Terran army, though, once again, caught right here in the middle of the map. And that is expensive, man. Those Ravens, they are a little bit cheaper now than they used to be, but still quite pricey. That's two more, I think, going down. At least if Corruptors decide to attack, move forward. Nice corrosive balls over there. Zerkling's getting a lot of damage done. There come the Fungal Growths, I would imagine, as he slows down the retreat right here of this Terran force. Very nicely done right here by Elazer, who now grabs a supply lead. Even the Queens were thinking of joining in in this battle. Not entirely sure if they're supposed to be here. Love this move as well, by the way. Going for the Neural Parasite. That will allow Elazer to temporarily force those Terran units to change sites. I think Special has been throwing away a few too many units for my liking. I mean, he's had the economical advantage here for a while. But the units that he is trading out are not cheap. Yeah, actually, you know what? He's had the, he's had the worker advantage, I suppose. But... He hasn't really had enough mineral fields to really mine properly. This expansion could have been taken a little while ago. Expansion here on the left side, I guess, got destroyed. He did retake that one relatively quickly, but... Now that the laser has caught up in the work account, and he's successfully reading the game that we're playing. We're playing a game that is going to go the distance, it seems. He's going to be able to catch up when it comes to that economy very, very nicely. Okay. Oh, I heard once again a couple Yamatos right there. Queen, trying to push that creep forward. Good siege tank count over here, but you can see that special is starting to slow down a little bit, right? This game was fully under his control for a long time, but now it seems that that table is turning here. Elazer trying his best to grab that supply advantage, and once again, huge fungal growth, man. Uh, the siege tanks there are in the back. You gotta be careful, you don't sacrifice too much army. But I think that was a pretty dang good trade right there for Elazer once again. Okay. Upgrades wise, actually, even though Special was getting all of these at the same time, he hasn't really been upgrading a whole lot since. I wonder if it's ever worth going for a third armory just to get additional damage on these battle cruisers. Because battle cruisers do fire very quickly, and every single one of those little missiles. They benefit from that, uh, well, air weapon upgrade, right? It'd be really sick to see anyways. Big push right over here. 
In the middle of the map, this is right next to that planetary fortress that was previously acquired. We do have a couple of neural parasites right now joining the fray as well. I would imagine Caustic Spray, yeah, is going to be used as well by those Corruptors. A lot of damage being done, but is it enough damage? The mass SCV repair, not bad at all. Corrosive Balls, though, are going to connect to those bad boys too. Reinforcing Terran units are coming in, but eventually that command center does fall. Mostly due to the help of that siege tank that temporarily betrayed the Terran army. Beautiful battle here. Once again, Neural Parasites. Helping out the Zerg player for a little bit and then runs out. Well, it gets destroyed right away. Battlecruisers, though, up north right now, going after a hatchery. Okay, they're gonna be able to take that one down relatively easily because the Corruptors were busy. And actually, there's only two Corruptors remaining right now. Not a whole lot of anti air. 11 more on the production tab, but Elazer is still not a rich man. He does not have a whole lot of resources in the bank. So, building all of these Corruptors, that was basically every single bit of money that he's been mining here over the last couple of minutes. Okay, okay, okay. Expansion in the top left, being acquired. Expansion in the bottom right, it's been mining for a little while already. Elazer is playing very quick. 508 average actions per minute throughout this game so far. Special, maybe a little bit slower. He's still got a decent economy. But I'm not as impressed by it anymore as I was just about 10 minutes ago, right? Maybe 5 minutes ago. Um, I would love to see him acquiring at least one more expansion and really secure his position in this game. Because I don't think this game is really going the way he had originally intended. Look at the amount of minerals and gas lost. This should really be heavily in favor of the Terran player. And it is slightly, but not by as much as I think it could have been. A lot of that comes down though, to those groups of Cyclones and Hellions that randomly got surrounded. You really don't want to have... Remember that overextension up north over here? Once again, a couple of Hellions go down, but the, there were like four Siege Tanks clumped up over here and a couple over here on the side as well. Um, those groups of units are very expensive and they were yeah, basically picked up by the reinforcements for what seemed like free. That was a good pickup though, getting a couple of those Infestors, not bad at all. Battle Cruisers once again, engaged right here on the right side of the map. They're gonna go after this hatchery. Okay. He really wants to get it. A couple more Yamato cannons. Fungal growth. Fungal growth is gonna make it. Ooh. <laughs> okay. Fungal growth would have inhibited the ability for those battle cruisers to use tactical jump. But because they used tactical jump before the fungal growth, it was not cancelled. That could have been an absolute disaster because corrosive biles would have shut down these battle cruisers in a heartbeat. Corruptors right now finally showing up to the party as well. They heard that there were better cruisers around here somewhere, but nowhere to be seen anymore. Well, I guess they're, you know, in the middle of that fight now. Ooh, we have, could we do uh, an anti a missile on a battle cruiser or something? That'd be kind of fun. Uh, we're just going to destroy it. Fair enough. A little bit of a zirkling run by over here, though. Grabbing a siege tank or two. Not bad. Getting a Hellion. Maybe one more tank here as well. Keep in mind, these are fully upgraded links, so they are very dangerous and they do a lot of damage. Once again, beautiful little run by right there from Elazer. Considering the fact that Elazer probably has not played against this sort of opener all too often, if ever. Because this is the type of strategy you save for the World Championships. He's doing a fantastic job. The only thing I don't really like is his armor upgrades. He's got, yeah, he's got very few upgrades here in total. Wouldn't mind seeing a little bit more there. Neural Parasite, once again. <laughs> he had to manually stare it back into the biles, but he got it done eventually. Special starting up a, a bit of a slow push here. Okay. SCV not getting uh, the most optimal repair, but at least it's getting a little bit of work done. Those battle cruisers, man, once again roaming the map. I guess at this point, you really wish you didn't lose that one, right? Remember when he uh, lost the 4th BC? That was a long time ago. If that one would have been part of the harassment squad the entire time, it would have... Yeah, it was one of the first ones. It would have done a lot of damage. Anyways. Ooh. We have Burrow being used right now to hide those drones underground. Once again, technical jump. You gotta get out. You gotta get out. Ooh, no technical jump in time. Does he have enough for a follow-up fungal? Okay, well, apparently there was a little bit of a lag spike in the game right there. I don't think that's the reason why these units got fungal, though, because I think he just got a little bit greedy. 
But that is really quite unfortunate right there for Special, as he lost those battle cruisers for essentially free. Well, I mean, they still were very cost efficient over time, but right there in the end, that was not the plan right there for them to go down. Anyways, that means that the Air of War has been won. At this point, well, he's got one battle cruiser apparently, one Raven. But I think we can start thinking about making some Brute Lords, right? Elazer at this point maxed out. He's probably going to keep those Corruptors around for a little bit longer, just in case there are going to be additional... Ooh, <laughs> the missile turret detection right there. Anyways, just in case there are going to be additional battle cruisers. I'm curious to see, though, if he's going to go for Brute Lords here at all, because look at the amount of anti-air available. I mean, there's the Cyclones, I suppose, but really not a whole lot. In a way, those battle cruisers were preventing those corruptors from turning into brutes. Good corrosive balls here, man, but I think we're gonna need them. Uh, making Roach Ravager Ling into an army like this? I'm not convinced that it's the best unit comp. Elazer at this point kind of broke when it comes to the gas count. He's rebuilding that hatchery up north, so at the very least, yeah, he's gonna be able to get some more mining over here, but he needs to be careful. A lot of drones actually getting roasted here. Not bad at all. Ah, catching a drone transfer there in the middle of the map with a few Hellions. You'd love to see that. Only 46 workers remain right now for Elazer, actually. Hold up. Um. Ah, maybe Special is doing this after all. That's pretty wild. He hasn't been upgrading his, his mech here in quite a while, though. I would have really liked to see him continuously get more and more of those mech upgrades, because it's been looking a little bit shaky. Okay, Brute Lords are coming up. I think Brute Lords are an amazing choice here. It's gonna force Terran to make either Thors or Vikings or maybe even back into battle cruisers, but it's gonna force a reaction out of the Terran. Once again, man, Neural Parasite's putting in so much value. Don't know what that little auto turret was supposed to do, but fair enough. <laughs> maybe he tried using the anti armor missile. I wonder if he's got hotkeys set up for Neural to... Uh Neural uh, ravens, because I don't remember the last time I've seen someone neuraling a, a raven, but anyways, kind of funny. I, I wonder if he had to click the ability right there to go for the anti-armor missile, because throwing an anti-armor missile on the Terran army is actually super sick. It would do a lot of damage. Anyways, fungal growths, man, so much value. Those infestors are honestly putting in a lot of work. Then again, though, there's not much of a standing army remaining here anymore for the Zerg player. He's desperately trying to make whatever army he can. Those Brute Lords a little bit faster with the new multiplayer balance patch, but not fast enough to get over here in time. Siege tanks in the middle of the map, couple of battle cruisers, or one battle cruiser here, just get grabbing as many kills as possible. Only two Brute Lords available, but it's gonna be enough to get rid of the siege tanks here, so that's quite nice. Corruptors right now jump on the BC, but the BC manages to teleport away. Another fungal growth come next with that army. Roaches and Zerklings dealing a lot of damage. Okay, the Zorkling run by here in the bottom right hand corner. I think Elazer is still doing this. What a sick game! Huh. Okay. Yeah, very fun. This has been a fantastic back and forth with some interesting units and a very fun unit composition, especially coming out of our Terran player. It's not game over yet, though. It's just the Terran doesn't have that much mining anymore, but Elazer has been broke for forever. Yeah. So I guess he's, uh, relatively speaking, less broke now, but he still has some money in the bank. Do you really want to make a, another 100 Zerklings, though, right? That's the question. I mean, it's nice, but those Blue Flame Hellions, they're ready to roast. 27 minutes into this, and we're still not sure who's winning. If we look right here at the Units tab, one battle cruiser, four Siege Tanks, 11... Uh, yeah, Thors are coming out right now. So there's two Thors just because of the fact that there's a couple of battle cruisers shown. And that's a very dangerous decision to make, right? A lot of SCVs, by the way, getting destroyed here in the bottom right corner. Ooh. That's a very dangerous decision to make, because if you have too many Thors, then suddenly the Roach Ling army can once again clear you up. Neural Parasite on Thors is also something to consider. And it's only been two Brute Lords. It's been a relatively small group of Brute Lords so far. So there's definitely some counterplay over there, okay. <laughs> These are not uh, Siege Tanks over here. I mean, Interference Matrix usually used in the TVT matchup. Maybe against uh, Colossus every once in a while as well. 
Roaches and Ravagers, though, just trying to deal as much damage as possible. Special is on the hunt. 87 army supply versus 118. Massive fungal growth, dude. Those fungal growths have been absolutely amazing. Putting in a lot of supplemental damage here over time. Siege tank's not sieged up, so that's gonna hurt quite a bit. And the majority of the Terran army right now has fallen. Even the Vikings do decide to land. But I think that Special is looking at his worker count right now, at the amount of income that he's got, and he realizes that he's not gonna be able to win this. Game 2. We find ourselves on Royal Blood. This time around, it's a standard opener from Special. Supply Depot on top of the ramp. Barracks on top of the ramp. Command Center on the low ground. Queen is gonna pop very soon, so she should be able to help push back this, uh, this Terran unit quite easily. Okay. So this is the type of opener we've seen many times before. I'm assuming it's going to be a third command center as well, because we've got a lot of money in the bank right now. No? Okay. It's got to be a starport first. We still have a lot of money in the bank, though. Uh, okay. Not the cleanest opener right here for special. I feel like it could have started up that third command center a little bit sooner than this, but fair enough. Anyhow, it's gonna be a 1-1-1 one, one, one right here coming out of special. I wonder if it's gonna be... Okay, it's gonna be a tech lap over here at the very least. I wonder if it's gonna be a battle cruiser start once again. I actually expected him to play something similar in the previous game and then transition from this opener into Terran Mech with battle cruisers. That's what I thought he would do. So, this is the more conventional route to take. Is this gonna be a Benchy opener? Could even be a, a Raven. Yeah, it's a Raven. That is cool. So the Raven is a little bit cheaper, but also a little bit weaker overall. The new multiplayer balance patch definitely having an effect though. This is a, a unit we have historically seen a couple times in the Terran versus Zerg matchup. Some Terran players are quite a big fan. The problem of going for a Raven, right, is that you can just straight up lose if your opponent decides to go for like a a big Roach Ravager Link Bane push or something like that, right? There's a couple of openers um, where something like a Banshee would just be a lot more useful. Then again, though, Roach push is not super common in the current meta. It's going to be a Baneling Nest right here for your laser, though. No Lair yet, which is rather interesting. He's making three Queens at once. Curious to see what he's going to go for here. A couple of Zerklings here. Getting a scout of the Terran's Natural. Okay, at least they grab one of the Hellions. That's not bad. So the Raven is very helpful when it comes to utility, right? Hmm, okay. That is not what I expected. This kind of reminds me of the Terran versus Protoss matchup, where we see one of those Ravens going across all the time. Huh. Getting one drone? Yeah, getting one drone. Okay. So the Raven, it can have a lot of utility. One of the reasons why I like it quite a bit in TVZ is because of the fact that it is a detector, right? So you can use it to snipe those creep tumors relatively easily without being forced to go for a bunch of scans. You could even use just the Raven, pop down an auto turret over there, it will slowly start working on those tumors. This... Mm -hmm. This I'm not sold on, man. I don't know. Anyways, Hellions right now, okay, ready to drive on over to watch the Natural, as Special is going for another YOLO push. He'll probably end up losing all of these, but hopefully the traits are going to be somewhat efficient. Okay, a little auto turret over there, dealing quite a bit of damage. Luckily right there for Brenda, though, there was a transfusion available. Ah, it's starting to hurt now, yeah. It's really starting to hurt now. Once again, by the way. Additional factories were added on right here for special. There's two more factories going down. Okay. Special is actually playing some really fun StarCraft 2. Historically, he's been a fan of playing these styles, I guess, but most of the time we do see him going for, uh, well, at least a bio play. At least the last few times I've seen him play, he seems to be favoring that infantry based army, but not here. So once again, we have Cyclones coming up, and we've got Hellions coming up. Cyclones, by the way, are just a little bit better overall against general units. So with the new multiplayer, uh, with the new multiplayer balance patch, the lock-on ability essentially is going to be more helpful overall. Um, in the past, it was specifically good against armored units, but now it will deal more damage against things in general. 
It's now also not going to be um, using that lock-on ability on units that aren't relevant, like for example against Locust, which also has a very, very big effect on the meta. There's a bunch of Zerg players actually that I talked to at IAM Katowice that are claiming, right? So these are high-level Zergs, like some of the very best in the world, that are claiming that this style of Terran is too strong. And now obviously, pro gamers are always a little bit biased, right? The grass is never green, or it's, it's always greener rather on the other side, so they always believe that the other players have it a little bit easier. Uh, that said, it seems that the general consensus is that this type of army is incredibly good once again. And we haven't even seen Benshee play yet, right? Benshees are quite a bit easier to get out right now as well, especially with the Hyperflight Rotors. There's a lot of potential there. I think it's an excellent unit to mix in with a unit composition like this. There's still a lot of experimentation that needs to be done both for the Zerks to try and defend this, but also for the Terrans when it comes to their optimal unit compositions. Okay, so here we go. Mac Field Accelerator, done. Suddenly, the red LEDs right there go on in front of those Cyclones, are, and they're gonna be ready to uh, shoot the missiles wherever they can. Ooh, Zerklings now get a wraparound once again. Man, we need to stop doing this special. We really need to stop doing this. Losing clumps of units like that, I mean, they obviously got a lot of value, don't get me wrong, but like... Oh, a little bit of a roll-by, apparently. Sorry, I missed it. I'm gonna go back. But, uh, yeah, we, we really need to stop losing random groups of units like that. Did those Banelings come all the way from the bottom right-hand corner? That's why I didn't notice them rolling around on the mini-map. <laughs> they, they came from right over here. Anyways, eventually they made it all the way to the top right. Okay, there we go. Yeah, so combined with losing that chunk of units there on the other side of the map, honestly, this may very well be the reason. Special may have looked away for just a minute and then, well, a minute, for just about a quarter of a second, and then he ended up getting his armies around it. StarCraft 2 is brutal like that. Anyways, 4th CC, already done nice and early. You do love to see it. Different unit comp, though, this time around here from Elaser. So even though Elaser won game number one, Apparently, he's not too happy with the unit comp that he was playing, as he's playing against the same style again. No Roaches, no Ravagers, no Corruptors. This time around, it's gonna be Hydraling Bane instead. So we're going... Okay, that is cool. We're going for both the Missile as well as the Melee upgrade. Skipping Carapace entirely. So Elaser is going for a full Glass Cannon comp. This is nice. Finding those Hellions, or finding those Banelings, rather. Yeah. Not getting any value out of those this time around. Okay, Hellions thinking about going for a little, a little run by over there, but that is going to be very difficult to pull off. Hive coming up right now for a laser as well. Curious to see what he's going to go for. I wonder how well things like Ultralisks work out right now. Historically, they weren't great against this sort of comp because of the Cyclone. But Cyclones now, yeah. I, I don't think they're going to be as good, right? So it's, as, well, they're going to be better overall, but worse against Ultras. I wonder if that's an option. I guess, though, if you want to go Ultras, you would definitely go Carapace upgrades. So, yeah, probably not. Probably not. Maybe going for Vipers and Adrenal Glance and all that instead. Just to supplement this army with better upgrades and a couple better units here as well. I gotta say, though, the Infestors really were the MVPs in the previous game, right? So, yeah. wouldn't mind seeing a couple of those coming out again, because Fungal Growths, definitely very, very, very good against this sort of unit comp. Command center. Building on a location here for special. Looks like the Hellions here in the bottom right corner eventually got cleaned up. There's the barracks from the early game. No longer needed as we apparently now have eight factories and that's all we're ever going to need. That's an awkward moment that I've ran into a bunch of times playing Terran mech myself. Where I'm like, okay, let me add on a couple more factories. And then I realized, wait a second. One of the requirements to build a factory is to have a barracks. Um, <laughs> and that barracks died ages ago. It's very easy to uh, just send that in as a scout and then to cross your fingers and hope you got to get the information and that it doesn't die. But apparently, yeah, eight factories is going to be enough right here for special, just like we would normally see eight barracks as well. Okay, he's going to collapse on top of this though. No blinding clouds available just yet. Really good siege timing right there from special as he absolutely fires away with those siege tanks. Then again though, yeah, okay. 
He needs to be careful. There's a lot of low HP units here in the mix. Trades though going a little bit better than we saw in the previous game. But you can see this is still a unit comp that requires some refinement, right? Like we 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 lack that 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 crispness that we see with with Bioterran all the time. So this isn't even the final version, I don't think, of playing Battle Mech. And uh, yeah, it's already really sick. Anyways, Blinding Clouds going down right there on those siege tanks. The majority of them are shut down. Very few units though for the Zerg player to actually deal damage with. Blinding Cloud does not last forever, so he has to reapply it right there. Not bad, though. I feel like Special could have unseached and gotten out of there because there were so few attacking units for the Zerk. But in the end, the Vipers do provide a lot of value. Abduction? Yoink. At least the Command Center finished up, so that's something. He's not going to be able to just grab that for free. Another Yoink available, I think, for that Siege tank over there in the back as well. Yep. Obviously, the abduction ability is a little bit weaker right now overall. Raven gets sniped out of the skies. Elaser being very conservative with his Viper positioning. I wonder if he could have gone a little bit deeper, just abducting the majority of these units for essentially free. But anyways, Thors are coming up right now as well. We have additional upgrades. And there's the Adrenal Gland starting up too. So that's going to give those Zerklings about 40% more attack speed, which is just incredible. Lurker, then. Okay. I was wondering where we're gonna go with this, because... Yeah. Vipers make a lot of sense. Those late-game upgrades make a lot of sense as well. But if you then transition towards... Yeah, where do you where do you go, right? Do you really just sit on, on Hydraling Bane Viper? You need something else. Careful now. <laughs> Don't consume your own hatchery. Anyways, yeah. Lurkers, definitely a good choice. But also a bit of a funky unit comp. I, I'm not 100% sure how that's gonna work out. Obviously, you can hold fire with lurkers. So if you can position them in one of these, like, almost like these alleyways over here and then, you know, hold fire. Well, that is a good couple abductions there once again. Not ideal at all. But there's definitely some potential with lurkers. It's just that they require a bunch of upgrades and quite a bit of gas as well. I don't think we should not be mining these gases. I think these Vespian geysers should be coming up as well. As he laser is just continuously pushing, actually. He's been getting a lot of value out of these Vipers. Yeah. Not a single one has gone down just yet, and they've been continuously abducting and using blinding clouds. At least I don't think a single one has gone down yet. I don't see it on the screen, but sometimes I'm known to miss things that are in the middle of my... Uh, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. It's all good. Okay. Darren Army, though, ready to roll out once again. Special got the base up and running here in the middle of the map. Likewise, I think you should take those refineries over there, but... Anyways, this expansion is super low HP because of the Vipers. Don't think that was necessarily the best call right there from Elazer, because now this hatchery is likely to go down. Interference matrixes on Vipers. Let's go. Anyways, eventually, though, the Blue Flame Helvets, they do a roast through that hatchery, and they're going to be able to kill that pretty easily. It's a lot of siege tanks, though. Look at that line of siege tanks. Special is almost trying to funnel his opponent through that choke point over there, but Elazer not taking the bait, just abducting whatever he can, and yeah, he's going to try and remax this once again. That's a lot of siege tanks all of a sudden. You make, uh, I guess when you have eight factories, right? It doesn't take long to produce, well, 13 tanks. But it is kind of interesting to see. One thing we actually saw quite a bit at Katowice is players mining these golden minerals from the wrong side. So we saw, especially guys like Haas, right? Which probably is not a surprise, but we saw them going for command centers on the wrong side of the minerals. Which, or command centers, or hatcheries, whatever, right? Um, it'd be kind of fun. I don't think it's a bad idea right here, because the golden minerals would be quite nice to mine. A hatchery over here, a command center over here. Uh, it's doable, especially when he still had this expansion, but special just now losing that with 10 SCVs as well. Now suddenly, though, we had 16 lurkers. Not a single lurker has hit the battlefield just yet until just now. And this is not something that Special is really well prepared for. Sure, he's got a lot of tanks, and that is very nice. But abductions are super good in combination with those Lurkers, right? Just abducting them one at a time. There you go. Killing them wherever you can. Moving forward once again. You can burrow them right next to a planetary fortress. And what in the world is Terran going to do against that? Well, not a whole lot so far. 
Okay, abductions once more, I guess. Ugh. He's very careful with the abduction. So the abductions now have about a one second delay whenever you use it. In the past, you could just abduct and then fly away with the Viper right away, but they've changed that. Love the couple overlords here as well, by the way, just to give them a little bit of an acceleration boost. Anyways, the Cyclone Hellion Ball. It's, well, run towards the other side of the map. Another low HP hatchery here. I would imagine that's due to those Vipers. It is going to go down. One uh, Lurker here trying to grab a couple of those units on the way out. At least it's dealing a couple... Eh, eh, okay. It, it is going to kill quite a few of them, actually. Siege tank over here being obnoxious, too. Raven right there providing vision for those burrowed units. So, at least he's going to be able to push it back. Don't know if that's a misclick, but there is a Banshee coming up. I would imagine that's a misclick. Probably intended on adding another uh, Raven into the mix, but I mean... Eh. Benchy play could be kind of cool. Alright. The Vipers are nice, but... A little more clumsy, right? We're gonna need one scan over here as well, just to get rid of this Lurker. I think that Siege Tank is ready to fire, but... Waiting for the Commanding Officer Special to actually give him the command. Uh, special busy looking over here. Very good back and forth so far, but I'm liking this more and more for special, I think, as time goes on. I say that as he's losing a bunch of siege tanks, but his economy is looking really sweet. He's got a good amount of money here coming in. Elazer has... Um, he, he's got a good force, I guess, overall, but it's pretty small compared to where it once was. He's been bleeding out a lot of units. The creep spread, also not very inspiring at all. All of these bases here are very exposed, and because of that, well, these Hellion runbys can deal a tremendous amount of damage. Zorklings, though, have found the base right here at the 3 o'clock position, so Elazer is going to be able to at least deal some counterattack damage there, too. Would have loved to see maybe a couple of Hellbats in this position, or, well, I mean, it's the old main command center, I guess, but a planetary fortress in that spot would be super nice as well. Blue Flame Hellbats, though, not bad against hatcheries, and they're going to be able to kill that pretty easily. Overlords, it's time to leave, or, you know, time to die, whatever you prefer. There's that one Benshee. Yeah, that Benshee is on the same control group as the Ravens. I think it was supposed to be a Raven. Anyhow, Command Center getting a nice little touch-up over here. It's once more going to be at full HP momentarily. And Special is ready to go for a little bit of a move. The creep spread has never been relayed, right? Like, we've never really seen a lot of creep moving out across the map again. This is painful. There's a Viper going down. Auto turrets dropped on the ground as well. They snipe one of the Vipers. They, well, we're thinking about killing one of the Lurkers as well. Parasitic Bomb at least went down there at the last second too, but the Raven survives with 20 HP remaining. Lurker being obnoxious over here in the top left corner, but Siege Tank, okay, forces it to drop between those two buildings. Now there's Lurkers over here on the right side as well, as the Laser is ready to pick up the pace. A very scrappy game though, as both players just take a tremendous amount of losses. That Raven, though, allowing him to not use nearly as many scans. That auto turret right now being used as well as bait for the uh, Lurkers to target fire. Elazer right there manually targeting on the Lurkers as well for just a second. Not enough right here, though, for Special to clean all of this up. Yeah, but there's more units coming in. Oh my god. 12 kills, by the way, on this bad boy. 13. Um... <laughs> <laughs> that's been a mini game and a half. Oh, lurkers, they really want to grab those SCVs, but that's not going to happen. Yeah, you really do need cyclones, right? Look at the dancing here that Special has to do to try and deal with this. This is one of those actions that takes the Zerk, well, about 5 APM. And for the Terran to defend against all of it, it takes like 500. Oh, okay. Well, with that base re-secured, apparently Laser realizes that there's really no way for him to stick around for much longer. Definitely a bit of an early GG, though. And that brings us to Gresven. A very interesting start right here from Special, as he once again sent that one Reaper towards the other side of the map. I thought for a second, as the first few minutes of this game uh, ticked by, I thought for a second that he was going to go for that double barracks start, but instead he decides to go for a barracks and then into a factory there at the front as well. What's curious about this is that add-ons over on this, this side of the map right, are very exposed. If Special would have spawned on the other side of the map, those add-ons would have been towards the right, and therefore towards safety. With him building these structures here at the front, it always makes me a little bit nervous. I've seen a couple of games 
where Stimpak, well, he's not been going for Stimpak, but Stimpak got repeatedly denied over and over and over again because of the spawn location of the Terran. This is uh, a little bit of RNG that we have in StarCraft 2, a little bit of randomness, because now there's two Reapers going to town. Once again, man, these build orders from Special are really interesting. Nobody goes two Reapers. Like, this was a thing back in, like, 2012, before anybody knew how to play the game. Sorry, by the way, to anyone who won Premier Tournaments back in 2012, but, like, seriously. The level of play has gone up so much over the last decade, I know. <laughs> Not a surprise at all, but <laughs> it's, uh... I mean, to be fair, Reapers were quite a bit stronger then as well, so maybe maybe it's not an entirely fair comparison. They've gotten nerfed quite a few times historically. This is dealing so much damage! Woo! Okay. Now Metabolic Boost is done. Couple good grenades over here! Oh, he tries to get out, then he does. Queens really want to grab those units, but they're gonna heal up once again out of combat. And I think it's special feels pretty good about this. Eight drones in total, four Zerglings as well. So far, it's a perfect game right here for our Terran, who now adds on a third command center. Once again, Raven inside of the main base. When did we decide that this is what we're gonna do? Don't get me wrong, I love it. I'm not sure if, if Special is ahead of the meta or if he's playing build orders that are stupid. I can't quite figure it out. <laughs> <laughs> I think he's ahead of the meta. Anyways, circling surround once again. How many times have we seen this so far in this series where a chunk of Terran units go down for what is essentially... Like, it's so stupid. It's it's really unnecessary, but... I can only imagine, though, if, if Terran players, like, you know, get a little bit more time to practice, which I guess they will right now, right? Since... Uh, the next main tournaments are not even announced yet, so we'll see when that's gonna happen. But they should have quite a bit of time to prepare for upcoming tournaments. I really wonder what this style looks like with a little bit more refinement, because there's definitely some room for improvement still, and already it seems incredibly potent. So now we're gonna go barracks. Really? So now we are gonna go for Stimpak. Okay, so I'm imagining we're gonna go for a reactor on the factory and then go for Metavex as well, because normally that's what you would do. Raven over here, by the way, getting a couple kills already, softening up a few of the drones. I think he's just gonna hang this one over here in the bottom right hand corner of the map. Just to chill. Just to hang out for a little while, try to, uh, yeah. Get some, uh, some damage in from time to time, right? You can just throw down an auto turret, then an auto turret, then an auto turret. It's at the very least gonna force the Zerk, yeah. To occupy a bunch of links over here just whenever that happens. Okay. So what's the attack going to be here, special? There's double reactor coming up right here. Fair enough. So we're going siege tank with this. And now additional barracks too. Third CC just landed. So all the timings that Elaser is used to are thrown out of the window, right? What you really want against this sort of attack is Banelink Speed. Now, Banelink Speed requires Lair, but at this point, I'm not even entirely sure if Elaser knows. Yeah, so last time Elaser was here, there was no green light yet? Eh, maybe it just started. Maybe he just barely saw it start. Yeah, maybe he did. Anyways, he doesn't necessarily know exactly what it is that he's playing against, right? Especially after the games that are previously shown. I wonder if Elaser is even really concerned about Banelink Speed. Well, luckily, he does go for the Banelink Nest here, so he should be able to start up that upgrade, but... It's gonna be pretty late. Stimpak is done. One thing we really need to see coming out of our Terran player here is combat shields. Don't want to forget about that upgrade. It's one of those things we see forgotten all the time, but super important. A lot of additional barracks, though, in the main base. So two more are added on. We're already at five. So I think Special is ready to move across the map here very soon. I mean, he'll probably wait. There's combat shields, by the way. He'll probably wait until 1-1 is finished. It'll finish right around the same time as Combat Shields, and that is going to be a massive power spike for our Terran player in blue. Let me actually flip the scoreboard right there, because I just realized it's upside down. Anyways, here we go. Even though, uh, yeah, he's probably going to go for an all-out attack here momentarily. He's still going to try and test the waters with Stimpak finishing up. And you know what? I don't hate it. Dealing a lot of damage right here to the hatchery, and you know what? He may actually just be able to kill it. Bailing speed only about a quarter of the way done. I think this was mostly an army that was meant to clear out a bunch of creep. Oh. Maybe trade out against a few units as well. Oh my god, you can't bleed out Zerklings like that, Elaser. 
Very nicely done. 11 marines coming up every production cycle right now. I don't think that's a misplay. It doesn't necessarily have to be anyways. Because if you want to go for the crispest timing attack, putting little hats on your supply depots allows you to make more units. Because obviously, well, it's going to be more of a boost in the short term, right? In the long term, don't get me wrong. I, I've... Yeah, definitely, uh, definitely better to go mules. But if you need supply right here, right now, because your timing attack is coming up, you can save yourself 100 minerals and going for that one supply depot less. Anyways, a lot of marines. A lot of marines suddenly available. Banelings, though, morphing in up north as well. This is a pretty well-protected mineral line with this set of structures. 1-1 one, one is done. Combat shields is done. Stimpak, of course, already finished a little while ago. But at this point, we also do have the Baneling speed upgrade finished. Bailing roll by, coming up. Siege tanks though, repositioning right now. Is there enough? He does see it and he does snipe it. Nicely done. It is critical for special, or sorry, for your laser to clean up these units. Okay, he's trying to come in right now. There's all of those reinforcements though. A casual 22 Marines come stimming down the ramp. And in the end, it's special playing some very fun StarCraft 2 who obtains the victory.